The sports movie genre might just be my favorite genre of all time. What's going on guys, I'm Chris, and welcome back to another video. So today I got a very special one, as I am joined by my great friends Brandon and Noah. We host the 3 and Out podcast, which is a weekly podcast where we talk college football and sports, do a bunch of cool tier lists and rankings over there, that is linked down below. I'm joined by them as we do a massive tier list ranking of a bunch of sports movies. With Ben Affleck's air hitting theaters, it felt like the perfect time to drop this video. And also introduce you guys to my two great friends and our podcast, which you guys should definitely subscribe to, linked down below and above. We had an absolute blast doing this video, and it's on the longer side, so get your snacks ready. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this. And of course, head over to 3 and Out and show some support to our podcast channel over there. Without further ado, hope you guys enjoy this tier list. We're here, tier list ranking some sports movies. It's going to be a fun one. Brandon, how the hell are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm liking the tier list. There's a lot of good sports movies here. I'm excited to talk about a few of them. Cinema, one might say. <laughs> Noah, how you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, definitely one of my top genres of films I like to consume. I'm excited to see how, how you guys feel about some of these. Some of them are a lot more film than movie, and <laughs> others are a lot more movie than film. There's oh, yeah. a difference between a film <laughs> a distinct and a movie. difference. But we're doing a tier list again of a bunch of sports movies we've compiled. Uh, some of us have seen them, some of us haven't. It, it, you'll, you'll get the gist of it as we go along. But the tiers we have are best of the best, great, solid, meh, and bad. These are the typical tiers that I do here on the channel. And before we get into this thing, if you guys like this video, Head over to our podcast channel, 3 and Out. It's linked down below. We do talks like this every single week, tier lists, rankings, talking college football. We have an absolute blast, so check that out. Link down below. Go subscribe. The first movie we have on this tier list, though, Do You Believe in Miracles? Because we've got Miracle, undisputed, goaded uh, hockey movie, and arguably the best sports movie ever. There's a discussion to be had. Kurt Russell plays Herb Brooks in this film. It tells the story of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, and it is so damn inspirational every time it's not just the mood like it's not just one moment there's multiple scene after scene that gives me goosebumps and chills i love it and i think i can speak for all of us this is this is probably going pretty high Noah, i know you're a big fan of this one too one of those movies that like your dad tells you about when you're like you know eight nine ten somewhere in there you're like okay whatever dad and then you finally sit down and watch it and it's like my life has forever changed. Easily a top four sports movie for me, probably higher. Staple of my childhood, every time like Olympics, summer or winter roll around, I'm watching Miracle. 100%. It's in my top oh, three. It's I always say in the videos, like it's between this and then two other movies we're going to talk about later. But Brandon, I believe you just watched this film recently for the first time. So I'd love to get your perspective on it as a newcomer to this damn great <laughs> film. Yeah, I was um, admittedly as a bit late to the party here. I think I watched this maybe a few weeks ago. It was it was really recent. I made it through 23 years of life without seeing it. <laughs> that being said, damn good film. Um, I don't know too much about hockey. Um, you know, living in, in Atlanta, the Atlanta area, they took away our hockey team. I've never been a super big fan of hockey, but honestly, I don't think you need, need to know like shit about hockey for this movie. It's just inspirational, motivational. I mean, Kurt Russell kills it in this film. Only having seen it once, I'd be willing to put it at least top five. I'm actually sliding up to best of the best right now. Uh, great way to start yeah. the start the tier. Great moments are born. A I great think opportunity. At the end, when it cuts to the real life broadcast, chills every, like I'm getting chills right now just thinking about it. It's like, oh. But next up, we are staying in the realm of the ice skating rink as we've got <laughs> uh, Blades of Glory featuring Will Ferrell as Chaz Michael Michaels. <laughs> Chaz Michael Michaels. This movie's hilarious. And Brandon, have you seen this one? I don't think you have, have you? I have not. I need to watch it. I think I've seen, there's so many films on TikTok nowadays. I think I've seen like <laughs> three or four clips yeah. over there. Um, so I, I kind of know the gist, but I haven't seen it front to back. So I'll let you y'all take the reins on this one, but totally, you know, yeah. I think it's probably uh, a pretty good film as far as comedy <laughs> sports movies go. <laughs> we'll, when next time we get together, we're watching that one. Um, oh, yeah. It's funny on multiple levels. The, the supporting cast is great. It's so damn quotable. One of my favorite bits <laughs> is when they're like training the treadmill and uh, a certain song uses a, a sound bite from... <laughs> From this film later on which is just funny you guys know what i'm talking about but yeah noah you and i've talked about this one i mean it, it's hilarious it's not like elite it. to me in terms of comedy but it's really solid i would say will ferrell had a stretch in the late 2000s yeah where it was, it was i wouldn't say like two or three maybe even four years in a row where he would just pump out like just absolute bangers i think it started with old school semi-pro is great also very underrated old yeah. school 
Anchorman, Semi Pro, Talladega Knights, the other guys. It was like from like 03 to 2010. Legend. It was like elite status. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like you said, this movie is so damn quotable. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Yeah. Gets the people <laughs> going. I mean, solid. Yeah, I lean solid, but like it's in that category of like man movies, at least for our generation. Yeah. It's a uh, a film you get together with your friends with and you consume a couple beverages. I, I agree. Wholeheartedly. It's a good it's a good bro down movie. Moving on to a bit of a more serious film, we've got Samuel L. Jackson as Coach Carter. I think to me, actually, it's probably, unless I'm forgetting something, it's probably my favorite basketball movie. Uh, like, I really just love Samuel L. Jackson's performance here. This is, I believe, Channing Tatum's uh, first mm-hmm. role on film. So that's really? something to write home about. I believe that's so. Impressive. It's inspirational. But I've caught, caught this one a few times. And uh, and, and Brandon, I want to get your thoughts on Coach Carter. I think I'm on the same train as you. Um, as far as basketball movies go, I think that's probably up there, if not one, very close to being one. I've seen this a couple of times, but damn good film, in my opinion. Sam- Samuel L. Jackson obviously has a fantastic performance. There's, you know, like you said, a few, a few stars in that movie, Channing Tatum. I think some other guys. I think this falls probably somewhere upper great. I don't know about best of the best, but I think there's an argument to be had. Yeah, I mean, y'all said it. As far as basketball movies, and I think, honestly, sports movies in general, you don't really see a sports movie try to tackle, like, a bigger issue a lot of the time. And I think this one does it and does it well. Like, with the whole, as a a student athlete, the word student comes first. I think I have it in great. I'm willing to listen to solid or best of the best. It's definitely a very underrated sports movie. I'm putting it in great. I think that we all can agree there. Like, it's, it's a great film. It's not one of the Mount Rushmore of like sports films to me, but it's mm-hmm. a top, I, I would say it probably cracks my top 10. Another movie that the arguments can be made there for a top 10 sports film is sort of a soft reboot of an iconic franchise, but it's not really, it's more of a legacy sequel in a way. Creed, starring Michael B. Jordan as Adonis, son of Apollo Creed. Sylvester Stallone, I've, I've said this on the channel a thousand times. You guys know I get fired up about it. He should have won the damn Oscar. The movie's incredible. Goes toe-to-toe with, like, the first Rocky, in my opinion. I've praised this movie so much on the channel. You guys know how I feel. Creed's damn good. Now, I wouldn't go best of the best, but I would put it over Coach Carter in the great tier for me, personally. I think I like it there. I've seen both both Creed's. I need to rewatch because admittedly, I feel like it's been a couple of years since I've seen either of yeah. the films, but I remember, you know, watching, watching those when they first came out, God, what was that? 2016, maybe. Um, but Michael Something B. Jordan like kills it. Um, like you said, I think it goes toe to toe with some of those Rocky films, probably above coach Carter. Definitely a great one. I am actually the opposite of Brandon. I just rewatched those probably a couple of weeks ago, actually Creed one and two still haven't seen the third installment, but Looking forward to that one. I think it's a great way to continue Rocky Balboa's story. I really like this movie. Kind of the same story for a new generation, in a way. I really like how it defines legacy. Him trying to make his own name apart from his yeah, father with Bonnie Johnson. Yeah, great stuff. I think it does that really well. <laughs> I'm throwing it in great above Coach Carter. Um, You can watch my full <laughs> uh ranking of all nine Rocky and Creed films. I'll link the video up above. <laughs> but next, we've got a movie that these gentlemen haven't seen. And it's actually probably the main inspiration for this video Air, the Ben Affleck directed film that just hit theaters. You guys can check out my review or slash out of theater reaction to that on the channel now. Air was a movie that I really appreciate. It was fascinating to me. It was almost like a history lesson into like the shoe game of the 80s, Adidas versus Converse versus Nike, and how Nike, uh, Sonny Vaccaro is, is the main character played by Matt Damon, how he was like the main pivotal force in trying to get Michael Jordan to sign with Nike. Uh, ben Affleck plays Phil Knight. It's, it's just really an entertaining ass movie. Um, I was a little sleepy, a little tired when I first saw it. So that kind of tainted my experience. And it does, it drags a little in the first 30 minutes or so. But once a certain scene with Viola Davis comes in, who plays Michael Jordan's mom, this movie goes to the next level. The thing about it is a lot of these movies have a legacy. And so like, it's hard to go above them with the movie just came out yesterday <laughs> as of filming this. So I think for now, I would go the top of solid. But again, on rewatch and after years, this could totally change. So right now I'm putting it above Blades of Glory in the solid tier. A few rewatches though, and maybe watching it with the boys could change my opinion on it. How great is Viola Davis? She's oh my awesome. gosh. All timer. She's incredible. Yeah. All timer. You know what's not an all timer? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Space Jam 2, which I think is called either Legacy or New Legacy or something. No, I want you to flame this movie. <laughs> I uh, just gonna say, holy shit! <laughs> where where to start? Um, the effort was made. They did not stick the landing whatsoever. Don Cheadle seems like the most pointless casting ever. I like, actually I, I forgot he was in the movie until uh, you just said that. Like I forgot that, a lot of this film. Probably the corniest joke I have ever.
ever heard. What's his name? Ready? Let, let it sink in, all right? Al G Rhythm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that now. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's that's not That's not good. That's not good. Yeah, and I get it. It's a kid's movie. I can't bring myself to like it. I, I will likely never watch it again. I won't either. I think the main yeah. issue with the film is that it lacks any emotional compelling story because mm -hmm. it's so clearly just forcing Warner Bros. IP down our throat to the point of yeah. like, why should I care? It was like, as kids, we were like, oh, they need to make another one with LeBron or something. And it finally happened. And yeah. that was cool. But like, I don't think any of the Space Jam movies are actually good. We'll talk about the first one later. But this movie just stunk. Mm. And it was like, oh, there's Pennywise. It was basically became a guessing game of of like Easter eggs. Yeah. And that wasn't yeah. my thing. Walking yeah. billboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I'm putting it in bad. Yeah. Not, not much else uh, to say there. I don't think I'll ever get around to watching it personally. I hate to spend time talking about it. But the fact that the actual basketball game itself, like invented rules, just pissed me off. Pissed me right off. There was I, I'm a very cut and dry. It's it, if it's a basketball movie, it needs to be played fairly. And it was just it, it became ridiculous. Like where yeah. you could score like thousands of points. It was so stupid. Anyway, should we go ahead and do the first one just to knock it out? Because yeah. I I can compare them all day. Like I yep. well, I, I just moved it up to the front of the tier here. So look, let's talk the first one. It's better, but the, it's not good. To your point that you just made with them inventing rules to the basketball yeah. game, I agree with you. It's pointless. Uh, at least in the first one, when it defies physics like it does, like with the whole Michael Jordan like stretching and yeah, you know, all of that. It, it's in Looney Tune world. That can happen in a cartoon world. I, inventing rules like we're playing basketball. Don't try to change the game. Yep. Then it becomes something it's not. If you want to make a basketball movie, make a basketball movie. I agree I completely. Know. And I think the first one beats out the, the second because, frankly, it's just more iconic at this point. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's really it. It just feels less of a product. It's got some charm to it. I, I think it's a mad movie. Like, that's where I'm leaning to put it. Yeah. Um, but, Brandon, you've seen the first Space Jam, right? I have. It, yeah. It's been a while, but I have. Same. I, I haven't I, seen I like it in years. The um, I think it's, it there. it's a classic that's really all the weight it holds, in my opinion. It's a kid's movie. It's fun. It's not nearly as bad, or at least it doesn't seem like it's nearly as bad as the second one. Kind of just one of those movies that's like, it's iconic, but does that actually mm -hmm. mean it's good? I don't think so. I don't think anyone watching this video has seen this movie we're about to talk about. <laughs> I think this is a very niche movie for people who grew up in like the South and probably played football in their youth. Facing the Giants <laughs> Is it, it's like a movie that it's out there studio. and I think it's like a faith-based movie and it's super it cheesy and really poorly acted and like almost laughable at how corny the end is. I think this kid hits like, I, I'm just going to spoil it. I don't care. This kid hits like a 60 yard field goal. <laughs> it's like, I forgot about that. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like slow-mo and there's like a dad who's just proud. It's like, it's almost like a Hallmark movie, right? Honestly, not a bad movie. I would probably go <laughs> mad. Because I'd take it over Space Jam 2. But you guys, if you haven't watched this, I feel like it's almost worth experiencing. There's a scene that they show in like uh, a ton of like motive. Like in, in uh, high school, we watched it in a class. Your coaches have probably showed it to you. It's like the bear crawl scene yeah. where yeah. Uh, this guy gets a blindfold on him and he's only supposed to go like 50 yards and he ends up pushing himself and going 100 yards, basically showing, you know, you can do whatever you set your mind to. So it's really cheesy and on the nose like that. But that scene is still somehow chilling in a weird way. <laughs> I still think I would go meh over, over Space Jam 2, though. I agree. So what you said about you think it was like a, a faith-based production company? It is, right? I just I just Googled it. Sherwood Pictures, an American independent Christian film production company. They also have a, a movie about, uh, is that Firefighters? Or is that Fox? the police uh, officer one? I think courageous. it's called like... Correct. Yep, courageous. I've heard of that one. And yep. then one about <laughs> Fireproof, who is a firefighter with a struggling marriage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The unofficial so, trilogy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the uh, Sherwood cinematic universe. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a very niche movie. I think we're probably the only, the three of the only people who have ever seen it. That being said, better than Space Jam 2. Yeah, it's going mad. So now, I would, yeah. put, I would put the first Space Jam over it, though, I just because of Michael Jordan alone. <laughs> Staying in the comedy genre, I guess, if you want to view Facing the Giants as a comedy, but Caddyshack is the next movie here. This is an 80s classic it's not as hilarious as i wanted it to be but uh bill murray is the standout here i think everyone can agree he is just so damn funny trying to catch that that gopher not the funniest thing i've ever seen i think it's at your house noah right there's like a caddyshack poster somewhere <laughs> yeah it's a dad um, movie it's, dude it's another dad movie yeah <laughs> um i recently got around to watching this one for the first time i would say a year or two ago this is when i heard about how much of an asshole 
Chevy Chase yeah. was during his time at SNL and all that. I think that kind of affected my perception of it. Like, obviously his character is very uh, abrasive. I'll just leave it at that. I mean, dad movie, it's funny, but it's not amazing. Brayden, have you seen I this one? I haven't seen this film. Okay. Not, not seen oh, you haven't? I'd like to. You know, I've yeah. heard of it. It's obviously a classic in its own right, but I've not gotten around to watch it. You're like, right, Chris. Uh, Bill Murray does steal the show. He's, he do- He totally he is, does. Oh yeah, he's great. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I can actually put it in solid because like I get like there's a temptation to because of, it, of the name and like the fact that it's that dad movie that we hear like yeah. our dads talk about. But at the end of the day, I don't really think it's even like that solid. Like I remember it being a little boring, surprisingly. I would put it in mad, but I would probably put it over Facing the Giants and I would watch it over Space Jam still just because of the yeah. Bill Murray moments. So I, I'm fine with mad if you are, Noah. I, I like that. And I yeah. just remembered the the like... I guess it was like a mini feud between that old country club member yeah. and like the new the new money guy. Yeah. And that's just like watching it. He was getting on to the newer country club member. Sorry, spoilers. For like <laughs> playing playing music and drinking on the golf course. I do that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? That's the whole point. The next movie here we've got is uh is McConaughey himself and we are Marshall. This is another one that we all probably watched growing up. I really have a soft spot for it. Um, I watch his speech a lot. Obviously, the story, it's based on a true story of the Marshall Thundering Herd football team and like the team, mo- majority of the team died in a plane crash, which is a very tragic story. Um, but it's also a very uplifting film and McConaughey's speech near the end, just every time it, it gets me going, it gets me fired up. It has been a while. I feel yeah. like I'm saying this for a lot of these movies. I've seen it once, um, but you know, just an, an awful, awful story with the, you know, the Marshall team. But I really think the film did, you know, the story justice, a very motivational, uplifting film. McConaughey kills it. I need to go back and watch that speech because I vaguely remember what you're talking about. Yeah. But I think it's I think it's probably at least top five football films for me. You know, obviously better than Facing the Giants. But um, I think it's a, a really solid movie. Yeah, I'm there. I'd probably put it above Blades of Glory. I can't speak to air. Yeah, I I love this one. I've also only seen it once. It's one of those where it's like, it's got pretty heavy subject matter. So it's like kind of hard to rewatch. I feel that way about Interstellar. I recently watched that for the second Mm -hmm. time. Shout out Mr. Bowie for uh, letting (laughs) me borrow that. And I just think the story of that assistant coach who, after the accident, wanted to stop coaching altogether. And McConaughey's character, the head coach, brings him back. I, I just think that whole part of the story is so incredible. One of those movies where you just got chilling moments multiple times. I'll put it in solid above air. The reason being, this is no slight to air for those watching wondering, why is an air higher? <laughs> I have to like, I can't put a movie that high immediately unless I just loved it. Air is still really, really solid. We are Marshall. I got that nostalgia. And I pulled up the speech. I just want to say one of the lines uh, when McConaughey says... When you take that field today, you've got to lay that heart on the line, man. From the soles of your feet, with every ounce of blood you've got in your body, lay that on the line until the final whistle blows. And if you do that, we cannot lose. <laughs> he is cannot so lose. good, dude. He is so you do, good. <laughs> you do a good McConaughey, my friend. Yeah, that Thank was, you. That was convincing. Good. All right, so the next movie we got is The Fighter, which I don't think either of you gentlemen have seen, but again, I think it's worth a watch. Christian Bale actually won an Oscar for this supporting actor. Mark Wahlberg is the main character. It's a strong brotherhood story. Um, It's a really actually compelling true story. And it's less about like the actual boxing, more about like the family drama. But I think it's a great movie. Like I would I would put it over what we have in solid so far, but I wouldn't go above Creed or Coach Carter. So I'm going to place it at the back of great. But um, the thing about it is it's like not one of those movies you're going to go rewatch a bunch because of the heavy subject material. Um, But it's still a great film, in my opinion. Moving on, we've got Invincible, which I think all of us have seen, right? Invincible with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Wait, a double I Mark mean... Wahlberg feature, yeah. Say hi to your mother for me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Invincible is one of those uh, like 2000s Disney sports films that's pretty enjoyable. It's it's run of the mill, dare I say. Like it's a little predictable. It's it's not pushing the boundaries. I I lean like solid. I don't think it's a mad movie because it has some pretty pretty awesome moments when they're like playing football in the mud. Out, out in like the rain that's like my favorite scene um it's a sick sequence yeah it is mm-hmm. Noah, where, where would you go with this solid meh what are you feeling yeah definitely solid uh i haven't seen this probably since i was like i want to say 13 or 14 that sounds sequence. about right for me as well it's been a few years um so. i mean a good watch if you're looking for like a football movie and you've seen all the others i think it's a decent addition to a pretty 
saturated genre i guess it's not an upper tier football movie in my opinion yeah yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah no no it's it's good uh like noah it's been a while since i've seen it like you said it's kind of formulaic i mean it's a good on underdog story kind of like the rudy formula like y'all said it's not in my upper tier when it comes to football movies but it's not the worst out there in in the football realm We'll go back of solid. Um, sounds fitting. Next, we've got a comedy film. I think two of the three of us gentlemen have seen it. Dodgeball. Mm. You've seen it, Noah, right? Have you? Mm. Brandon. You it's that? one of those. It's one of those. Brandon, have you seen Dodgeball? I have I've definitely seen, seen Dodgeball. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I've seen parts of it, and I know I know the absurdity that Ben yeah. Stiller brings to that role. Uh, it is it's, hilarious. It's on my list. Like, what what streaming service is it on? Where can I? Watch I have it? no idea. I don't know, but it sounds like we've, we're cooking up a, a nice little double feature of Blades of Glory and Dodgeball the oh, next yeah. time we're together. I'm so in. I'm ready for that. This movie is hilarious. If you could dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Jason Bateman has like a tiny, tiny role that's just so memorable in the film. And it's one of the <laughs> iconic, like quotable comedy movies that is like a must see. Vince Vaughn's comedic presence is unmatched the way that he can just go like, well, you know, we're, we're out here. <laughs> he just does we, were, that. <laughs> we were talking about runs. Like, we were talking about Will Ferrell's run. Yeah. Vince Vaughn oh definitely deserves to be in the same breath. He went Wedding Crashers, Dodgeball. I can't really speak to Dodgeball, obviously. Yeah. But there's a number of films in the same time period, and even some of the same films, old school, especially. Old yeah, school. he has a great appearance in Anchorman, too. I love old school. <laughs> Anchorman's great, yeah. yeah. Like, I would probably say this is better than Blades of Glory. Like, because I wouldn't go great with Dodgeball. I don't, <laughs> would you, Brandon? I don't know about great, but it's really solid. I, I It's kind of hard to compare it. Hard to compare these um, comedic films and some of the ones that are that are more serious that we'll, we'll get into later. Um, but this has a special place in my heart. I grew up on this movie. Mm-hmm. I've seen it multiple times. Um, you know, Vince Vaughn, Ben Stiller. Um, it's it's so funny anybody that hasn't seen it i would i would recommend highly i would go above blades of glory but like by a hair probably next we got ford v ferrari have either of you seen this one i have you have uh no brandon we're gonna kick it over you then i'd like to rewatch. i've seen it the once but i really really enjoyed it Um, me too you know obviously one of the ones that's more serious in nature i'll be honest with you guys i think this is a damn great film i think it deserves a spot in great over the fighter i put it behind coach carter you just have a you have a christian bell man crush i i think he's just one of the goats is what i think (laughs) he is i love him maybe it's more matt damon here but i'm gonna put it in great uh right above uh the fighter highly recommend if you guys haven't seen it undisputed uh, uh greatest sports film of all time i think it's like in my top three favorite movies ever. In fact, right now, it's probably my favorite movie. Remember the Titans. I'll do the honors and put it at the top of best of the best right now. I think we all agree. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Please. The GOAT sports film. And one of the just GOAT films ever. Yeah. I mean, the the movie not only doesn't have a banger of a soundtrack, it's hilarious when it needs to be, but it tackles a very important issue in not only like American history, but the world. It's a film that everyone just needs to watch right now. It'll change you. It's a beautiful movie. And um, I cry still. Like, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Like, when I watch this, the the scene with Bertier and Julius in the hospital, which everyone's seen Remember the Titans, it gets me every single time. Uh, I think he's like, Alice, don't you see the family resemblance? It's my brother. I mean, that, yeah. oh, that gets me, man. Oh. It gets me. God, I so, need to rewatch this soon. Man. I, I, I'm due for a rewatch as well. Fired up. Me too. I <laughs> love this movie so much. I mean, like oh. you said, this is like, like up there, just like not even sports movies for me, movies in general. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Another one that I grew up in, like going into this, I knew this is number one. It's just, for me, it's undisputed. Yep. It's the number one, man. I mean, I, I quote this one all the time with you guys, with anyone out there. Like I'll just mm-hmm. say random lines in my daily life. Denzel Washington, I, I honestly believe he could have won an Oscar for this. Like he's that great in it. And just the brotherhood relationships that form throughout the film, it's very strong. If you played sports of any sport or just any team activity, it's very applicable. Um, And I think Mm -hmm. that it it warrants the spot in Best of the Best. The score to Trevor Rabin composed the music. It's not on Spotify, but I've been listening to it on. It gets me (laughs) amped. Hell yeah, baby. Uh, um, I was about to mention that. Oh my gosh. I was like, yeah. (laughs) Score and soundtrack both. Yes, both of them. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 I, film. A, yet another reason to love this one. Yes. I just, Everything I mean, about it. Like the scene when they're, the score is best it's called, movie. I think it might be. It's called Titan Spirit. And it's when they start the training camp and it's like, it, it shows them doing up downs and running their drills. And then he's like, we don't change oh, the way we block. 
and then he's like blowing the whistle it's like all of it's fantastic i love 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 this movie Petey, how many feet are in a mile <laughs> i mean we could just do a quote off right now oh, we could. We could. literally oh, yeah. i mean uh sunshine ronnie bass sunshine. <laughs> sunshine's from california <laughs> the movie is it's incredible i mean and ryan gosling a young ryan gosling he's hilarious when he's doing the shoulder thing with ain't no mountain absolute <laughs> absolute liability at corner though, oh my god so no absolute question. liability yeah. burnt but hey he's in the barbie movie so it'll be okay yeah he's ken <laughs> look we could talk about we could do a whole hour long thing on remember the titans and probably will one day if i'm being honest but it's incredible and it deserves <laughs> to be in best of the best moving on we've got a film an 80s classic the karate kid less mm. sports movie more kind of 80s teen drama but still Got some, got the All Valley Tournament at the end there. Look, it's a classic. It's iconic. I have, I, I like this one. I feel like the most probably out of three. Of I love this movie. Um, in terms of like pure sports movie though, I don't know if it's one of the best of all time because it's less sports, like I mentioned, more '80s drama type movie. But yeah. I still think it's great. I think this is one of the first, if I'm not mistaken, one of the first sports sports adjacent movies i've ever seen obviously like in our area we we didn't really have much martial arts it kind of exposed me to a whole world like this is a very big thing in some areas i love this movie like it was one of the first movies where it was like oh there's a training montage and mm. yeah. it kind of instilled in me early on like training montages are badass yeah i love them they're so and badass. <laughs> i know you're a uh you're a cobra kai fan um <laughs> How do you how do you feel about uh, Sweet the Leg Johnny? I I mean it's 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 a dirty move. It's a, it's a dirty yeah. move for sure. But um, has he changed? The Cobra Kai still, show still I, the same old Johnny. <laughs> the Cobra Kai show really humanizes him, and it's it's strength in my opinion is giving us a yeah. new almost looking at the Karate Kid, the events from that film from a new lens. So I highly recommend it if you are a fan so, of the Karate Kid. A la um, How I Met Your Mother. Ralph Macchio is the villain. <laughs> I love that. That's one of the best like bits oh, in a in a sitcom. Ever. Oh, it's so great! It's so great. fantastic. It's awesome. Okay, I I'll have to take a look at a uh, Cobra Kai. Then. It's it's maybe hard to compare to some of these other ones. Yeah, in the sense that like y'all are saying, it's kind of more of like a I wouldn't say a social commentary, but you know, it's like a teen teen movie in the eighties. It's got some sports in it, but a classic in its own right. One of the ones that. I feel like a lot of kids watch growing up. It might be top of grade, which is, is that blasphemous or not? Do we put it over Creed and Coach Carter? Or do we put it behind the it's... two? I think it's clearly over the fighter and Ford v. Ferrari. Now we just have yeah. to replace it. Yeah. It's been a long like... time since I've seen Karate yeah. Kid. Same. I don't know if I would take it over Creed or Coach Carter though. Okay. I'm fine with that. Coach yeah. Carter, I would, I would fight. I would fight for Coach Carter. Fair. I really like that. I think Fair. I've watched the film twice in the, in the past eight months. So it's very fresh in my mind. The that's Miyagi funny. wisdom. I mean, that's what I love. That mentorship. If if this was Wait, like '80s movies, we weren't talking about the Jaden Smith remake. <laughs> what the hell? No, we're that's actually talking about the right? next Karate Kid with Hilary Swank. No, um, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should have put that one on the list. It would have gone in bad. Should have. No, I actually oh. thought it was fine when I was ten, but I haven't seen it since then. A whole new tier. Uh, awesome. We'll go middle <laughs> of great. Middle of grade like with the Karate Kid. Okay. I want to make yeah. it known that if this was 80s films, I might go best of the best. Next is the movie I, Tanya. Quick hater here. I know you guys haven't seen it. Margot Robbie should have won the Oscar. Sebastian Stan gives his best performance here. It's tragic as hell. It's honestly a messed up true story about Tanya Harding and like her life and everything. Damn great movie. I would put it above The Fighter in uh, great. I really do recommend this one. If, and Paul Walter Hauser, I don't know if you guys like him. He crushes it here. Uh, great film. We're very well directed. Oscar nominated. Ooh. Rightfully so. Who won the Oscar that year? Frances McDormand, I believe, for three billboards okay, outside Evan, Missouri. But she, Margaret Robbie, should have won. Next is Hoosiers. It is impressive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I just mean it's impressive. You just named the Oscar yeah. winner. Oh, 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 oh. I was like, like, I thought you were saying it's impressive <laughs> that, that Margot should have yeah. won. Well, thank you. Yeah. I have, yeah. I consider myself decently well versed in, in that kind A of stuff. A savant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yes, next is Hoosiers. I think it came out in 1986. Uh, Gene Hackman, uh, Dennis Hopper, is that his name? I believe is in the film. So it's a, it's a classic basketball movie. It's like the definitive, I think, basketball movie. It's not one I rewatch a lot. I haven't seen it in probably eight to nine years, but it is a classic rightfully so. So the lowest we can go with this is solid. I think this is 
Actually, if I had to say, one of the first dad movies. I played basketball, a little league as a kid, uh, all the way through middle school. And this was one of the one of the ones that my dad showed me at a young age. I like it a lot. I wouldn't go great with Hoosiers just because of the fact that I don't rewatch as much. It's a solid movie, though. I think I prefer We Are Marshall over it. And then now the reason I'm conflicted is because I definitely would put it over the comedic films that we have here. I think I might lean air over it right now in terms of the rewatchability factor. So we'll put it like in the middle of solid. Next is King Richard, quick hitter. Will Smith won the Oscar controversy at the at ceremony, of course, with a slap. My wife's <laughs> The movie itself, it really is inspiring. And the one thing I take from it is like uh, the way that that uh, he instills like discipline in his kids and the ability to like have your next day planned out. That's something I took from this movie. Like I always love to write down my agenda for the next day before I go to sleep at night. Uh, John Bernthal is in this one too. And he's got a great, great performance. I thought he should have gotten nominated for an Oscar. Uh, he has this like Wisconsin accent. He's talking like that almost. And it's funny, but it's also... Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So I would say solid for King Richard. I really liked it when I first saw it. I would go solid. I'd probably put it right behind Air over... Actually, we'll go like right behind Hoosiers and Air. So over the comedic films, but it's a solid watch. I recommend. Next, we have ourselves an elite movie, Moneyball. Mm. Yep, mm. yep. Moneyball is a movie that... I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I think it's comfortably in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. Like I true, like I watch this one at least once a year and it's so damn good. Aaron Sorkin wrote the script. He also wrote the script for the social network. So it makes sense how it's so fast paced and intelligent. Jonah oh, Hill. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Jonah Hill's great dude. in this, he actually got nominated for an Oscar and so did Brad Pitt. It takes a look at the business side of the sport, which is way more fascinating to me than the actual sport itself. So well put together. The score is awesome. I love it. I mean, I think we have our next installment and in best of the best to me. I personally. do too. I do too. Like I you said, aside from even sports movies, just as talking about movies in general, this has got to be up there for me personally. Um, Brad, Brad Pitt, Jonah Hill, great film. Like you said, kind of a, a fast paced um, go, 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 but it's, like you said, very, very intelligent, um, kind of a different perspective on on a sports movie like you said from the business side kind of something you don't really see a lot of looking at um you know in, into the what happens um, with gms and scouts and all that i thought it was a, obviously a really good film so i think i have that in best of the best behind um remember the titans it's my number two that's the question that i'm gonna ask you Noah. is like is this over miracle because i think remember the titans is a clear one but is moneyball over miracle that's the question now i personally prefer it to miracle i think it's got a lot more at least for me rewatchability it changed a lot for me uh because i didn't really think about the whole business aspect of professional sports i didn't think of what guys in the front office are doing and how those things come to fruition after i watch this like i'm so much more like analytical i i would say the impact of this movie will last well into the future so mm -hmm. i personally prefer the miracle but that's that's a preference thing they're both yeah. really good that's that's tough i think they're neck and neck it's but, close i'm putting mir I'm, excuse me i'm putting moneyball in the middle right now so we go remember the titans one moneyball two miracle three that is earlier in the video i hinted at it. that's my top three sports films yeah that's yeah. pretty much cemented it, well it's 1a 1b 1c i think it i think it, yeah. it's up to the beholder those are the three best and if you don't agree i, I don't <laughs> care so. keeping it in the baseball realm here this is a, i'm always ashamed to talk about this i've never seen the sandlot fully and people are like Same. damn you you haven't either I've, so well, I've, never, I've never started it okay before you roast me in the comments section they're coming for us baseball you ready? i like i played t-ball and i was like five like i i just didn't really like it i went and went and played soccer and football like i, I don't know sorry baseball was never really my thing i've only recently come around on baseball so don't take me to prison just yet <laughs> <laughs> i've seen moments and i'm familiar with the iconic quotes you know but brandon yeah. you're the one who's got to do the talking and the heavy lifting here for sandlot i've seen this movie through maybe a couple of times it's been a very long time but this is for me this is more of a, a childhood classic in my opinion this isn't something i'd really you know, want to go and rewatch. Um, I feel like it's kind of space, like Space Jam in the sense that it's kind of geared towards, you know, more of like the, the children aspect. But I, I'd say it still holds its own as a sports movie. I would say it's above Space Jam. But when we're talking about all these other films, I think it kind of goes lower than a lot of them. But I'd say it's a classic in its own right. I think it's worth a watch if you're interested in baseball. I'm sure a lot of people 
um, who did grow up playing baseball, hold it really near and dear to their hearts. I'm going to let you place this one. So what's on. is Space Jam and Meh? What, Space what Jam's is... in Meh, so is Facing the Giants, yeah. and, and Caddyshack is at the top of Meh. Is it a Meh film? <laughs> Low-key? Or would that, look, that would start riots. Is that going to outrage the masses? Oh, it will. You're talking, about, you're talking about Sandlot? Okay, no comment. I can't. <laughs> I have stain. Look, look, it's fine. I might have to put it in Meh just because Do of it. the precedence we set. Because yeah. um, of Space Jam, I kind of I kind of view it in the same way. Maybe it's above Space Jam. I think it's right there with it. Um, I'll put it right above Space Jam. Yeah, that's fine. If y'all want to watch it, watch it. If you don't watch it, that's honestly, I don't blame you. Moving on, we've got probably my fourth favorite sports film. Best Picture winner at the Oscars. It came out in 1976, I believe. And it's Rocky. This is the ultimate underdog story. And I mean, this is a movie that actually changed me in a way because I, I had the poster over my bed for a long time. And I would I watched it. And the very first time I watched it, I went downstairs into my basement. I had weights. I started lifting the weights. Like anytime I watch this movie, it gives me the, the juices flowing. Gonna Fly Now by Bill Conti is like the Rocky theme. You gotta gotta blast that. And the whole franchise that it launched is iconic. I think this has to go best of the best. I think behind Easily. the three we, we mentioned, but I think it's got to go best of the best. You guys agree? All-timer, like for sure. Yeah, Rocky. I need to rewatch. I, I do too. Rocky's an all-timer. There's that spot in best of the best. Moving on, if you ain't first or last, we got Talladega Nights, the Ballad of Ricky Bobby. That's I fair. think it's probably funnier than Blades of Glory and Dodgeball, though. I think but, I'd take over Dodgeball. Yeah. I can't Blades of Glory, but that... <laughs> oh my I'm God, thinking... it's, it's a classic. <laughs> It is. My and favorite scene me. from this movie is not one that you would think of, but the funniest scene to me, truly, is when he's in the bar with Amy Adams and the Journey song starts playing. <laughs> and he's like, are we about to get it on right now? <laughs> and then they just start, like, the dialogue you've there. You've told me that before. I know you've told me that <laughs> I, I've talked about it a lot. They just start going at it. Like, it just makes me laugh so hard for no reason. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a funny. solid movie. Damn near great, I would actually say. Damn near great. <laughs> it's damn near, yeah. It's solid. It's Will Ferrell in the prime of his career. Like you said, though, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't put it too far up there. I think it's just, like, differences in subject matter. Kind of yeah. From yeah. It too far. It's hard to compare. It's making yeah. fun of the culture of NASCAR. Essentially, yeah. Ricky so, Bobby. <laughs> I'm comfortable and solid above dodgeball. Then I'll put it there in the solid tier. If we're good with that, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> I say that one a lot. Moving on, we've got a movie I haven't seen. People might get mad at that in the comments. Rudy, let's air out some grievances here, gentlemen. I know we talked before recording. Uh, it's fine. I'm not the biggest Notre Dame fan out there. It's a classic, right? It's a classic football movie. A bit over exaggerated, most likely. Um, from what I've heard. To me, the classic underdog story, kind of the formula for that kind of thing. Sean Astin, right? Yeah, Sean Astin. I like him a lot. Um, Bob, you know, I think it's... Stranger Things legend. Yes. <laughs> and of course, Samwise Gamgee from Lord of the Rings. I might take some heat from this. I know a lot of people love this and think it's a classic. I think it's a tad bit overrated. Not really one of my favorites. I'm kind of in the same boat. It takes a long time to set up. Like it it like yeah. I, I know a story like that you're supposed to kind of be in the trenches with them and like go through okay, walk on to a program, go through 4 years, finally have your moment in the last game senior day, whatever. It's very drawn out. It almost oversells its point of like Rudy, you should quit the football team. You're wasting your time. What are you doing? Yeah. It's labeled a classic and rightfully so, but I think that's yeah. just for lack I of mean, better football movies at the time. I it mean, could have been done in like 45 less minutes. I'd take it over Invincible Person. You would? That, okay. Yeah, I, 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 I all it over Invincible. Time. So next is the movie Warrior, a film that I have seen and I would love to show you gentlemen at some point. It's from the same director, Gavin O'Connor, who did Miracle. So that should sell you. Uh, Tom Hardy and Joel Edgerton play brothers, and they both have, you know, different pasts and histories, but they are involved in this sort of UFC tournament. And it's just a really, really emotional film, dramatic, so well done. Uh, Frank Grillo has one of the best speeches. It, it, it just'll get your blood going. This is an incredible movie, truly. It's not one that I rewatch a lot. It's probably been, I mean, I've watched clips from it a bunch, but it's probably been over a decade since I fully watched it. So I'm due for the rewatch. But if I'm being honest with you, it's in the great tier. And I think you guys have to take my word for it. It's in the great tier. And I would put it damn high, like almost top of great. I, I'm serious. It's so good. It's so good. I won't for this since you guys haven't seen it and it's been a while. I'll put it behind Coach Carter, but I will say on rewatch that could that could crack a top five for me. There are only two movies left, and one of these is Longest Yard, the Adam Sandler version. 
I myself have only fully seen the original. I've seen enough of this. I'm familiar with it. I've seen the, the end of it and all that. So I've basically seen it. Um, so I, I kind of want to let you two gentlemen lead the conversation here. Noah, where would you put <laughs> The Longest Yard? I honestly haven't really met anyone that's seen the original. Ah. I just know, I mean, like it's a <laughs> mid-2000s remake. I, I just thought we would put that out there. We know it's not the original. A star set of cast. Absolutely. Like I, this is a fun movie. Michael Irvin's in this, obviously. Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, Burt uh, Reynolds. The goat. Is, it's cool that he's in here. Burt yes, Reynolds. he's, yeah, he's the main character of the yeah. original film. Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz. You want to get uh, him? I'm looking at the cast right mate. now. Joey Diaz <laughs> is in this. Yes. yes. Oh Harry Cruz, Tracy Morgan, yeah. oh, Stone Cold wow. Steve Austin. Wow. It's a solidly solid movie. Yeah, it's right there with. It's I think right up there. Dodgeball and Talladega. I might split them. With this, would it? Well, that makes awesome. sense. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You okay. need to watch. You need to watch this one, Chris. Oh man. Yeah, I do. It's so good. Great. I put it in between Talladega Nights and Dodgeball in the solid tier. Yeah. It's no, it's a fun watch. Of, like you're home on a Friday night, want to have a couple adult beverages and watch a <laughs> watch a funny movie. Yeah. Like this is a good contender. And then there was only one, The Blind Side. Nominated for Best Picture, Sandra Bullock got her Oscar. I always have really liked this movie. I saw it in theaters with my mother and my brother back in the day. I love a good football movie, and this is this is better than We Are Marshall to me in terms of football films. This is one of the one of my favorites growing up as a kid. I don't know. I, I like this a lot. Um, growing up playing football, I like it at the bottom of great. I would put it over We Are Marshall just because it's such a noteworthy movie obviously sandra bullock's performance is incredible it's one of the first sports movies i was introduced to as i'm sure you two gentlemen also the same generation yep we were <laughs> coming coming of age to kind of like watch sports movies and like movies of this nature with like more mature subject matter i think it's bottom of great but it's definitely open for comparison i'm in agreement with you i would go back of great I think just because it is one of those movies that kind of maybe shaped my childhood in a way like sort of i just yeah. really remember seeing it in theaters and watching it a ton as a kid at the end of the day it is it does have a pretty impactful message i think so yeah. i would go back of great with blindside that's a wrap or sports movie tier list <laughs> there you have it let us know in the comments down below your favorite sports movies and where you would place them in these tiers if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see it on a weekly basis check out the three and out podcast with myself brandon and noah on a weekly basis, we talk college football, sports talk over there. It's linked down below. Go subscribe. It would mean a lot. Let us know your takes on these movies down below. Subscribe with the notification bell. Subscribe to 3 and Out. Until next time, see you guys later.